All right, let's talk for a minute about what right triangle trigonometry is. And to introduce it, I have produced this lovely drawing. You're welcome. I know it is a treasure. Uh, feel free to take a second, pause the video if you need to, to just admire it. But let's ask ourselves this question once you are done feasting your eyes upon the greatness that is. And that question is, if I have this person here, and I want to know just how tall is this tree, how in the world would I find that? And this leads us to a nice discussion of what things we can measure. And so there are fairly easy things to measure, and then there are more complicated things. Um, so to directly take something and measure the height of this tree would be pretty tough. Uh, we can't like take meter sticks and pile them on, or just stretch out some measuring tape. There's no, <clears throat> excuse me, good way to get up there and drop that down safely. This is not an easy thing to directly measure. However, we do have some things that are easy to measure. We can measure the distance from there to there pretty straightforwardly. So we can measure distance along the ground. That's not so bad. And it turns out that another convenient thing to measure is actually angles uh, are not that bad to measure using uh, what's called a plumb line. You can very easily tell what angles are going on. So I can say if I were to look at this tree, I could very easily find an angle there. So the question is, if I know just this angle and just this distance, do I have any way to figure out the height of the tree? Now we also know that this is going to be a right angle because those two uh, are going to meet at a right angle always, so that's not anything overly difficult. And it turns out we do have a way, and this process is called trigonometry, the study of the ratios within right triangles. And I want you to note that trigonometry, the stuff we're about to learn, only works in right triangles. This does not work in any other situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn some ratios that are going to help us figure this thing out. Uh, but first, let's talk about some of the terminology we'll see there. All right, so this angle that this makes from the ground up to the top of the tree, uh, we call these angles in trigonometry theta. So theta is just a Greek letter. Uh, its symbol looks like a zero with a slash through it. Uh, so this is theta, and it's spelled T-H-E-T-A. And it's essentially a Greek letter for a th kind of sound, like a T-H almost. But this is the symbol that we use to represent the angle. So this represents in degrees uh, the measurement of that angle. Now, once we have this, one of our non-right angles that we're calling theta, we have names for the sides of the triangle as well. Now, one we already know about is the one directly across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. And now we get clever. Check this out. The side that is directly across from theta, the side that is opposite of that, we call, and I'm going to turn it sideways here and write this, the opposite side. I know, crazy, isn't it? So the side that's opposite of theta is the opposite side. And the side that connects to theta, that touches it, that is one of the rays that forms the angle, we call that the adjacent side just like that. Now, what I can do is I can set up these ratios that I was telling you about, naming each of the sides according to this. And here are those ratios. We can take the sine of theta. I know it's spelled sin, but it's pronounced sine. We can take the cosine of theta, or we can take the tangent of theta. And so what this means is that sine is a function, cosine is a function, tangent is a function, and I'm feeding in the measurement of theta into this function, and it's going to give me some number. And the number it gives depends on these sides. So if I take the sine of theta, the number that I'm going to get from that, if I, let's say theta was 30 degrees, and I put into the calculator sine of 30, that number that I'm going to get back is going to be equal to the length of the opposite side 
divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is equal to the length of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, these must be memorized. There is no way around having these things in your head and convenient to use because you will need them too often and they are too handy not to memorize. Luckily, there's a nice little mnemonic to help you out with this. Uh, think of this as being sort of an, a Native American type of name is how I was told to remember it as Sokotoa. And if you can remember Sokotoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now the nice and useful and handy thing about this, and the reason we keep these around, is that each one of these has three things in it. Theta is in all of them, and then they have two of the three sides. So what that means is that we can use these functions to find either a missing side or a missing angle of any right triangle provided I know the other two. For instance, uh, if I know an angle and I know the opposite side, I can find the hypotenuse of that triangle. Or if I know the angle and I know the hypotenuse, I can find the adjacent side using the cosine function. And we'll go into a little bit of the nitty gritty detail of how to do that a little bit later. Uh, but know that the usefulness of these is that they allow you to find either missing side lengths or missing angles in a right triangle and they can be used on any right triangle, which is extremely useful. Now, our initial problem was how do we find the height of this tree? Let's talk about how that works for a second in light of what we know now. I said I can measure theta, and I can measure my distance from the tree. That means that using one of these functions, and notice cosine has theta and the length of the adjacent in it, I can now find the length of that opposite side by plugging in my angle for cosine, and then there are tables where you can look this up, or even better, you can just enter it into a calculator. So suppose this was 30 degrees, I could tell my calculator, give me the cosine of 30 degrees, and it would give me that. I know what the adjacent is, and I can do a little bit of algebra. Uh, to find uh, the hypotenuse, or the opposite, excuse me, tangent would be a better choice here, wouldn't it? Um, so by using these functions, I can find that missing side, and that opposite side can be set up to be the height of whatever object I want. Uh, so the real-world usefulness of this comes from indirectly calculating the height of any object you want based off of the angle you have to look up to the top of it and how far you're standing from it.